So in a previous video, I discussed that if a hacker goes ahead and has your IP address, they can potentially mount something called a DDoS attack. And so in this video, I want to talk about exactly what that is. And to make it very simple, we're going to take DDoS, which stands for Distributed Denial of Service, and we're going to split it into two parts. So we'll start with the denial of service part. All that means is that the hacker is creating an interruption of services. So a DDoS attack basically floods a target server with an overwhelming amount of internet traffic. Because remember, there's only a certain amount of bandwidth that computer systems can handle. I'm using the internet on this computer, which means I'm connecting to other servers, I'm communicating over the internet, and if you throw enough traffic and congestion and garbage in there, then the systems might be overwhelmed, and then I won't be able to use my computer or my website appropriately. And this is important because a lot of hackers go ahead and do DDoS attacks. It's pretty much the most popular type of hack you can do. Now, why do they do it? Well, maybe an e-commerce store wants to launch a new product and they're launching it this Sunday and the hackers, they might attack that Sunday so that the site goes down so people can't use the e-commerce platform. Or maybe it's a concert venue selling tickets and the hacker's gonna attack that. Or there's a grand opening event and hackers wanna take the website down so that there's downtime so that potential clients or customers or visitors can't go ahead and find the actual grand opening correctly or function on it correctly. And so the D in DDoS stands for distributed. Now, what does that mean? Well, a denial of service attack, especially back in the day, you could try that with just a simple computer because bandwidth was really, really low. But nowadays, you can't really hack someone just using your computer and take down a computer system. What you need to do is have a distributed network, which means a lot of different computers and devices that go ahead and send this bad malicious information to go ahead and congest so that the good information can't get through. So where exactly does a hacker get these other computers and devices to help in the DDoS attack? Does it go and does it buy them? So does it buy hundreds and thousands or even tens of thousands of computer systems and then go mount an attack? Of course not. I mean, hackers can probably hack and get money, but they don't have that much money. The way it's done is they hack individual computers or computer systems and they have them download malicious links or malicious software scripts and then the hacker can remotely control these devices so that it can use them to mount a collaborative attack on a user or a computer system and go and flood it effectively, breaking the system and the user not being able to utilize the server correctly or the website correctly and all that type of jazz. Now, it's very, very interesting because you can think of it as like a highway. If you had a store on a highway and there's normal traffic, then people can stop in, they can buy goods, they can leave, they can stop in again, ask some questions, buy some more goods, leave, and there's a healthy flow of traffic a lot of people are seeing the business but if there was a blast an explosion if a bridge fell and then there's ambulances firefighters cops then all of a sudden the traffic is stopped right there's a lot of congestion and people can't get to the store and becomes very complicated convoluted and there's a whole lot going on and the store is not going to make a lot of money right because there's not normal traffic and the normal way of business operations and this is a good metaphor for what's going on with the DDoS attack because these many computers, which are known as a botnet, where now they can remotely mount these attacks by having access to these bots, right? They're almost like zombies, these computers, because they're under the control of the hacker when the hacker wants it. And sometimes hackers will have these scripts on computers and they won't touch it. So they won't do anything with it. So the user will think it's fine. And when they need to use it for an attack, they'll go ahead and utilize that malicious script to go ahead and create a mountain attack. So this topic is actually also interesting because it's been in the recent news where Google went ahead and claimed that it stopped the largest web DDoS attack ever on one of its Google Cloud Armor customers. And they claimed that it was a botnet attack that peaked at 46 million requests per second. So you could see there was a lot of garbage traffic that was sent their way to go ahead and dismantle the regular way of 
operating on the internet for this client and their servers or their systems. There are some companies that go ahead and mount DDoS attacks on themselves. Now, why would a company go and hack itself? and perform a distributed denial of service on their own systems. Well, they're doing something called stress testing. They are going ahead and they're testing their own servers to see if they can deal with the congestion that would come from a potential DDoS attack. Because remember, if you're a hospital, right? If you're a major hospital, you can't have it be that some nerds in some basement somewhere that decide to go ahead and DDoS attack you and all your systems go down. And then, you know, a lot of the patients are struggling and the staff has no idea what's going on. You can't afford to have that. And so big businesses, big organizations, they actually hire people to DDoS attack them and then write reports and see where they can patch up certain things. Maybe they can expand their bandwidth. Maybe they can have some more security measures in place. And so this is important to realize that even though DDoS is quite simple to explain and understand, it goes a lot in depth and there are good uses for it, not just negative uses, as in penetration testing, where you're trying to penetrate your own system to see if there is something that you could be doing better so that you could be more resilient against DDoS attacks. Let me know in the comment section if you learned something today, which topic you wish for me to cover next, and I will see you all in the next video.